What's up, Pack Nation? It is Pack here, and in today's video, I'm sick. Like, I am not feeling good. I feel super weak. So, while you're watching this video, do me a favor and cover your mouth so you guys don't get sick as well. Now, you do care. what I want to talk about in this video today is I'm going to talk about the 10 teams that have been surprising this year, whether or not they have been successful or and like no one expected them to be good or they've been pretty trash and no one expected them to be pretty trash and how i'm doing this is i'm getting the eight best players of these teams before the roster update ever happened compared average ratings of these teams how good they were expected to be and then tell you guys where they really are standing wise and see how big of a difference it's been and why it's surprising before this video starts if you're one of the 75 percent of people who are watching these videos but not subscribed stop it get some help don't be lame, be an OG, join the Pack Nation and subscribe. Let's get this video started with the Memphis Grizzlies. So in NBA 2K20, people expected them to be the 15th best team in the West. They're expected to be the worst team in the West. And yet somehow this team is 11th at the moment. Now, that's still not a playoff team. It's still not good at all, but it's better than people expected. It's a surprise. That's why I have them at number 10, right? So, Jaron Jackson Jr. is doing better than last year with 14.5 points per game, 5 rebounds, and a block a game on lower field goal percentage. He's not really the one to talk about in this, in this team. It's John Morant. It's probably Rookie of the Year unless Zion can do anything about that. 18.4 points per game, 3.3 rebounds, 6 assists, a couple turnovers, but on 47% field goal percentage on great 3-point shooting for a rookie, He's doing a really good job. Now, Donna Valentonis is doing a little worse than last year when he was on Memphis and Toronto, but still, he's doing what he usually does outside of that. So I feel like the, their big three is doing fine. It's just they're bent, they're not really deep. Brandon Clark has been surprisingly well as a rookie, 12.3 points per game, 6 rebounds. Andre Iguodala is not even playing. Jake Crowder's hit a game winner, so he's been good for the team. He's been a good defender. Dylan Brooks has been doing really well, 13.4 points per game. So they have talent, but because they're in the West, they're only 11th, but that's plus four than what they were expected to be in NBA 2K20. They're probably not going to make the playoffs, but they're way better than people expect. At number nine, another team that kind of has the same situation, the Dallas Mavericks. Now, the Dallas Mavericks were also expected to be the 11th best team, and yet they're the seventh best team in the West right now, record-wise. I mean, that's crazy. I get that it's early, and it's only been a couple games, but still, a seventh in the West playoff team with this team is actually pretty impressive. Let's talk about why. It's been Luka Doncic. He hits the 90 overall club for the first time in his career. 28.5 points per game. I think he's fourth in the league scoring-wise. 10.7 rebounds. Nine. He's almost averaging a triple-double. I'm pretty good efficiency for the most part. Porzingis has been doing okay so far. 18.6 points per game. Not really efficient, but 8.8 .8 rebounds and 2.4 blocks. So he's been a good defender. He's scoring a little bit, but his efficiency has been a little off. But his 3-point field percentage is pretty decent. The rest of the team isn't great. The biggest thing with them is they really don't turn the ball over. They do the little things. They get a lot of rebounds. They don't turn the ball over. They really have been like a middle-in-the-pack team. They don't really foul anyone. Tim Hardaway Jr. has been pretty bad, to be completely honest with you. And yet, even with that, even with, honestly, a lack of real good depth, they've been doing pretty good so far. They can figure that out. DeLon Wright's been doing as good as last year, but not great. Dwight Powell, not great. J.D. Barrera's barely started playing. Boban's been okay. He actually does pretty good for the most part. Jalen Brunson's been doing pretty good. But again, nobody on the team's really going off, and that's kind of been the problem with this team is that I guess that Dorian Finney-Smith's a pretty good defender and I know Maxi Kleber has been like pretty good 9.3 way better than last year 6.3 rebounds but this is the problem with the team is that they have no depth and because of that they're struggling so if they can somehow figure out how to use the team that they have better they could win a lot more games I mean they lost twice to the Knicks that can't be happening now at number eight the team I want to talk about is the Detroit Pistons they were expected to be the eighth best team in the east and now they're the 13th and it's not really fair for this team to be completely honest they've just been injury prone Blake Griffin barely played Derrick Rose has been barely played and that's their two most important players Reggie Jackson has also barely played I think yeah like like, honestly, everybody's been kind of out of it. So if they can get a healthy team, I think they can be pretty good. But Luke Kennard has been playing good for them. 17.8 points per game is awesome for the dude. Like, he's one of the most improved players of the league right now. Derek Rose has been playing awesome. 18.8 points per game for this team. Like, Griffin, I mean, we know how good he can be. And then Andre Drummond's having himself a historic year of 19.6 re points per game, but 17 rebounds a game at the moment on a crazy efficiency. Like, he's he's one of the best centers in the NBA right now, and it's, it's showing. So, as long as their team can be healthy and their depth isn't great, but as long as they can stay healthy, I think they can totally make the playoffs eventually. Now, for the team at number seven, it is the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now, the Minnesota Timberwolves were expected to be 13th in the West. Like, not a good team at all, to be completely honest with you. And their eighth seed right now, I know it's early, but their eighth seed at the moment. And why is that? Because Carl Towns playing awesome. 27 points per game, 12 rebounds. 
really good efficiency. I mean, that's what he does. Like he's he's known for that. Robert Covington is that like a really good defender who can also get buckets whenever he needs to. And Andrew Wiggins is having himself a great year. One of the more improved players at the moment. 26 points per game, five rebounds, 3.6 assists on 47.8% field goal percentage. He's actually playing like he's honestly kind of shutting up his critics. And I think he's only 24 years old. Like he was. He was young and everyone was kind of like being rude to him saying like, oh, you don't even want to play like you don't like basketball. I feel like he's been doing a good job and I think he's shutting up the haters for sure. It's the re he's basically the reason why they're doing so good. He's been playing nuclear for them. And that 80 overall is way too low for him. I bet he's going to be like an 85 at least by the end of the year. Now they are sixth in points per game scored, but they're sixth in allowed points, which can't be happening for this team. If they can figure out their defensive situation, they could definitely be a good team. Now the Warriors. Now this one was kind of tricky to do. I didn't take into account Curry because he hasn't played really. And Klay Thompson. So there was players I didn't take into account in this. And still, they're expected to be the 10th best team. And they're the 15th best team in the West. They're the worst team in, in the West. And again, it's injuries. It's not fair to them. Draymond Green has been injured essentially the whole time. Steph Curry has been injured. And he's going to stay that way for the, uh, probably the season because he doesn't want to play. Klay Thompson is done for the year. D'Angelo Russell's constantly getting injured here and there. Their best player has been Eric Pascal for the most part. And even guys like Kevon Looney is injured. Like, everyone's hurt. Like, this is crazy. Like, they're actually looking at a point where, like, they might have not enough players to play. Uh, guys like Jordan Poole have been having to step up. Like, this is not a good team because their team hasn't been there. If they tank and get a number one pick in the future, they'll be a great team because they'll have Curry back, Draymond, Clay. They'll have D'Angelo Russell, Willie Collins, signs, and a first-round pick, and Eric Pascal. Like they're gonna be scary again next year. Watch now for the San Antonio Spurs. This like hurts to talk about because why do we suck? This might be the first year in a long time we might not make the playoffs. The team was supposed to be the seventh best team in the West, and now they're the 13th. Why? In my opinion, there's just no energy. Like no one wants to win. There's no energy on defense. Like bad, and then offensive. We we stink. Our two best players are not aggressive at all offensively. Rudy Gay is always been eh to me. DeJounte Murray's come back to injuries, so we don't know how to like use him for, to be honest. And then Derek White's not used to this new system of being the backup point guard. DeMarco doesn't even play. Jakob Pertl's terrible. We're using most of our offensive schemes for Patty Mills and Marco Bellinelli. Like we're doing everything wrong. The only people who are like surprisingly good is Trey Lyles and Brim Forbes who I I mean even then he's shooting too much. And then I think Lonnie Walker needs more minutes. Like we're doing everything so wrong with this team. And again I have confidence Coach Pop to fix it but it's bad right now. At number four, it is the Portland Trail Blazers. You might be wondering, why is this team bad? Dame, CJ, Nurkic, who's injured, but Whiteside, Rodney Hood, and they just picked up Melo, Kemp Baseball. Like, they have good talent. What's going on? First, they lost a lot of pieces, like Al Farouk Amino and, and Maurice Harkless. Like, they had good players that they lost. But not only that, and, I mean, Nurkic is injured, but not only that, they're 22nd in the NBA in field goal percentage. Like, they suck offensively. And then not only that, they suck at defense. Damian Lillard's never been a good defender. CJ McCollum's a really bad defender. Hassan Whiteside's a good defender, but that's it. Rodney Hood's whatever. Cam Bismarck's whatever. And then you added Carmelo Anthony, who's not going to help you on that end. All Carmelo Anthony that is there to do is make everybody's lives easier. Now, Anthony Simmons has been pretty good so far. 11.4 points per game. But, I mean, Dame's getting his buckets. CJ's doing eh. He's just low, really low on efficiency right now. And the schedule hasn't even been that hard. They were expected to be, honestly, a contender. They were expected to be the sixth best team in the West. And now, they're like the 12th. At number three, it is the Charlotte Hornets. Now, Michael Jordan was tired of people talking about how bad of a manager and owner he is. The Hornets were expected to be the worst team in the East as the 15th team. And now, they're the seventh team in playoff position at the moment. Now, let's be real. I think we all can agree that we don't expect them to continue this, but let's talk about why they're in the position they're in. First, they're number 12 in the NBA defensively, which is not bad at all. They're ninth in the NBA in three-point field goal percentage. All the rookies have been really surprising. Devontae Graham has been awesome. 18.8 points per game, seven assists. Like, he's been awesome for my fantasy team. PJ Washington has been awesome. 13.1 points per game, six rebounds, and a great three-point field goal percentage of 50% because this guy's a sniper. Like, the rookies have, they got really lucky with how good the rookies are. Malik Monk has taken a step up, in my opinion. Dwayne Bacon has been playing pretty decent for the most part. Almost 10 points a game. Terry Rozier has been stepping up with 17 a game. Cody Zeller has been, like, the Al, the Al Horford of this team for them. Nicholas Batum just came back, but uh, don't expect them to play much. Like, everybody's doing a really good job. Even Miles Bridges, 11.6 points per game. Like, everybody's doing a, such a good job playing together, figuring out how to win, and it's surprising. I don't know if it's going to continue, but if they keep playing like this, I wouldn't be surprised if they made the playoffs at all. At number two, it is the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat were expected to be the 10th best team in the East, and they're actually the second. Are you kidding me? Why are they so good? Let's talk about it. So first, I think most importantly, Bam 
has been really good this year with 14 points a game, 11 rebounds, 1.5 blocks on great efficiency. Like, he's been playing awesome. Goran Dragic has been willing to accept, like, a different role on this team. He isn't as aggressive, and yet he's still getting his buckets. Myers Leonard is doing a pretty good job, in my opinion, 7.4 points per game, 4.2 rebounds on great efficiency. And then the rookies, Tyler Hero. 13.3 points per game. He's doing awesome. Kendrick Nunn, 18 points a game. He's doing awesome. The guy who was expected to be the worst player on the team, Duncan Robinson, is getting 9.7 points per game, which is really good, and he's a starter. Derrick Jones Jr. is still doing pretty good. Justice Winslow, even though he's hurt, has been great with 13.8 points per game, 8 rebounds, 5 assists, even though he has a low field goal percentage. For the most part, I feel like he's been playing good defense, so it's fine. And then Jimmy Butler. This Not only is this team working together and everyone's scoring, but Jimmy Butler has like Oh, I don't need a score? Bet. He's only getting 18.4 points per game, but he's doing everything else. Six rebounds, seven assists, three steals, almost a block, 45% field goal percentage. Everybody's doing their part, and everybody's winning great. I think a lot of this has to go to Eric Spolstra, being a great coach for this team. And finally, at number one, to no surprise, the Phoenix Suns. I'm going to keep this one short because I'm... Oh, gosh. Okay. They're expected to be the... 14th best team in the NBA, well, in the West. The 14th best team in the West, and yet somehow they're the fifth best team. I'm not saying they're like contenders or anything, but th th this doesn't seem like a fluke. They've had a hard schedule for the most part, and they're winning. Devin Booker has been as good as he's always been, and his defense has stepped up. They don't even have DeAndre Ayton, and they're winning so much because he had, apparently he did some drug, and, and he's missing a couple games, well, a while. But still, whenever he comes back, they have him, who's doing great, 18 points a game, 11 rebounds, and 4 blocks. He was doing awesome. Kelly Oubre, 17 points per game. Who would have thought? 6 rebounds. He's been playing great for them. Ricky Rubio was the perfect point guard they needed. Almost 14 a game, 6 rebounds, 9 assists a game. And Aaron Baines is arguably... One of the most improved players from 5 points a game to 15. Dude's been playing awesome on way better field goal percentage than last year. Like, he's been taking it up a notch. This whole team, their depth isn't even that bad. With guys like Dario Sarge, Tyler Johnson, Frank Kaminsky, and then Javon Carter. Like, everyone's been doing a surprisingly good job. And that's why they're surprisingly getting all these W's. And I don't know if it's going to stop or not. Like, they could low-key keep doing this. <sighs> okay, guys. That's it for this video. Do you guys agree with 2K or disagree? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like my channel, give it a sub. And I'll see you guys next time.